Hello folks, in this video I'm going to demonstrate how to replace the starter motor on a 1988 Ford Bronco. This is the 5.8 liter engine, uh, but this process should be pretty similar across all the Bronco engines. Um, so first thing you're going to want to do is uh, disconnect the battery cables, um, which I've already done. And now I am positioned under the vehicle obviously. Um, I'm on the passenger side looking towards the rear and uh, you can see right here is the uh, engine oil pan and right here is the exhaust that crosses behind it. If you look just above the exhaust, that's the starter right there. So the first thing we need to do is disconnect the uh, wiring right here which is held in place by a uh, bolt right there. Uh, I believe that is a 5.8, sorry, 3.8 bolt. So I'm going to go ahead and remove that and then there are two bolts that hold the, actually hold the starter in place and we will remove those next. Alright, so you can see I've gotten the uh, wire removed from up here. I've just pulled it down out of the way. Now we are ready to move on to uh, removing the two mounting bolts. So again, you can see there's one on the bottom that my socket is currently on. And there's another at the top. Let's see if I can point to it here. It is right there. I'm tapping on it now. It's got a bunch of oil and gunk on it. Hopefully you can see that. So we just need to remove those two and then finagle the starter out of position here. Um, those bolts both require a, let's see what this is, a half inch socket. So I'm going to remove this one first so that the top one can support the weight and then I'll uh, carefully remove the top one and pull this out of here. So let me get that done and I'll be right back. Alright so I've gotten both the top and bottom bolts removed and you can see the shutter is now loose. So I'm going to need two hands, but we're just going to kind of pull it um, down through the opening here. Watch out for these, uh, I think these are transmission lines. Watch out for those. And you don't want to clip the wiring on your oxygen sensor there, but there should be enough room to kind of tip it out of here. And we'll uh, get it on the ground and get ready to install the new one. I'll be right back. All right, so you can see I've got the starter on the ground now. Um, that was pretty easy to get out, really didn't give me any trouble. You can see where it came from. Um, so we're going to clean this up and get ready to reinstall the new starter. Now just remember, this came out like this. It's got sort of a, a bump out on the, the case. It came out just like that. Um, the bump out sticks, points up. Uh, so just remember that the new starter is going to need to be oriented that same way. All right, be right back. All right, I've got my new starter ready to go. You can see it came with its own cable, electrical cable mounting bolt. Um, so I'm going to use the new one. And we're ready to put this back in the truck. You can see that I've cleaned up the mating surface there a little bit. And we're ready to raise it back up into position. Um, so the installation is obviously just going to be the exact opposite of how we took it out. I'm going to hold this up into place and install the upper bolt first uh, so it'll support the weight. And then I'll do this, the lower bolt second and we'll uh, reconnect the cable last. So um, I'm going to go ahead and get this upper bolt installed first and then we'll wrap this up. All right, I've got the upper bolt started and I just wanted to give you a quick visual of what I used to get it started. I held the um, starter in place with my left hand, um, right hand dominant. So I wanted to be able to use my right hand <coughs> to start the bolt. And all I've got here is, is the half inch socket on a, an extension. And I've got this handy little thumb turn ratchet. Uh, it gives you a good grip. And so I, I put the bolt in the socket before I 
got situated and was able to uh, use the extension to position the bolt in the hole and just start turning by, by hand. <coughs> uh, and so I've got it in, hold, in far enough now that it's not going to come out and now I can uh, position the lower bolt easily. Okay, I've gotten the bolts tightened down and I'm ready to finish making the electrical connection. You can see I've already got it started. So the connector on the cable actually kind of slides between this terminal post and the little copper plate above. So just slide your connector between there and then the bolt goes in from the top side and you just tighten it down <coughs> and then you're done. So I'm gonna finish tightening that up um, and we will try starting the truck, see how this goes. Okay, before we start the truck, um, I forgot to mention that when you replace the starter, it's also a good idea to replace the starter solenoid, which is right here. It just mounts to the passenger side fender. Uh, it's real easy to replace. It really just has two bolts that hold it to the fender. Uh, and then, of course, you get a bunch of wiring connections that I've already undone. But basically, on my truck, the, uh, you can see my... <laughs> My solenoid's falling apart. It disintegrated. I guess the plastic had gotten brittle. And in the process of undoing the electrical connections, it snapped. Um, but basically, you've got the terminal here and the terminal that just fell off right here. Um, you've got uh, the battery connection on one side and the starter connection on the other. So really, all this is is a switch. When you turn the ignition key, it sends a 12 volt signal to this terminal right here that allows the plunger creates a uh, there's a magnetic or a copper coil in here that creates a magnetic field that allows the plunger, plunger inside to make contact and bridges the gap between these terminals. So it sends battery power through the solenoid down to the starter. Um, I believe on my truck this is the battery side and this is the starter side. Um, so you can see I've already undone the connections. Just take a photo before you um, take everything apart so you know where it goes back. Um, I'm going to finish removing this old broken one and we'll get ready to install the new one here shortly. All right, so you can see I've got the old uh, solenoid removed. I've got my new one here ready to go in. And because of the orientation of the bolts, there's really only one, one way it can go in, so you can't get it backwards. So you just line up the top hole and the side hole. You can kind of see the outline of the old one. So there's your bolt holes, and those are those are eight millimeter screws or bolts, whatever you want to call it. So I'm going to get this mounted and uh, we'll reinstall the wiring connections. Uh, it's important to not over tighten these. Uh, perfect example is, you know, my old one snapped. The housing on that one was plastic. The replacement feels like it's better quality. This feels like it's a metal housing. So that's good, but you still don't want to over, over tighten these things. So I'm going to install this and we'll work on the wiring next. All right, I've got everything reconnected. Um, once again, just you know, take a picture before you take everything apart and make sure you put it back exactly as you removed it. If you do get confused, your new solenoid should have instructions. Mine did. It told me which was the battery terminal, which was the starter terminal, and of course your ignition connection goes there. All right, so now we're ready to reinstall the battery and give it a shot, see if it'll start up. I'll be right back. All right, the battery's back in the vehicle, and we're ready to go ahead and see if it'll start up. We'll see what happens. Nice. We are back in business. So I hope this video has been helpful. This is a really pretty simple project that anybody can do. Uh, you really don't need any special tools. You just need a few basic sockets and... Um, um, wrenches um, and just a little bit of time I think all told I probably spent maybe an hour on everything I mean getting the starter out took maybe 10 minutes I probably spent more time you know looking for tools and going to the parts store than anything so uh, anyway I hope this has been helpful um, and I hope you can use this video to save yourself some money thanks for watching